Welcome! We are at the U.S. Geological Survey Cascades Volcano Observatory, and right now we are in the ops room of the observatory. So this is where we observe where monitoring data is coming in from each of our volcanoes here in the Cascades. What exactly is a volcano? A volcano is a place where magma is coming from the deep earth to the surface, where magma becomes lava, or explosive pyroclasts. And pyroclasts are just the word that we use for volcanic rocks that explode out of the volcano. What are we seeing on the monitors back here? There's data coming in as we talk. What's going on? There's data coming in from each of our major 10 volcanoes in Washington and Oregon. And we have seismometers that measure ground shaking. So we can feel or detect when the ground is shaking even a tiny, tiny little bit from each of the volcanoes. We also have data coming in on volcanic gas and sound waves. Sometimes if volcanoes have rock fall or if they have eruptions, they produce sound waves that can be detected. Do you watch all 10 volcanoes 24-7? Pretty much. They have permanent sensors that are located on them and that means that any ground shaking at all can be detected, and the more seismometers, the better. Why is it important to continually monitor these volcanoes? Well, we want to continually monitor our volcanoes so we can see if any of them start to wake up. Because at the moment, all of our 10 major volcanoes are quiet. So they're still active, they're just in a quiet background state. So what that basically means is that we want to be aware of any changes so we can figure out when our volcanoes erupt, which one, and what's it doing exactly? If one of the volcanoes woke up, what would that look like? It could take a number of different paths. One possibility is that there could be a little bit of unrest, so ground shaking from magma movement or bursts of steam, and then the volcano could just go right back to sleep and nothing extreme ever happens. Sometimes a proper eruption can ensue. So for example, in 1980 at Mount St. Helens, there were months and months of unrest at the volcano, and then the really cataclysmic eruption happened on May 18, 1980, with volcanic ash plumes that went 32 kilometers into the atmosphere. So many, many different scenarios can occur, and that's why we have constant monitoring and scientists who are trained in uncovering the behavior of each of the volcanoes. Is there any way to pinpoint a time when one of these eruptions might happen? Yeah, when's it gonna happen? When's it gonna happen? <laughs> so there, there are two approaches to this. One is to understand the geology of the volcano. So by going back in geologic time, by uncovering the layers that are preserved from each of our volcanoes, we can get a better understanding of how they behave through time. The other side is the monitoring. And so this is why it's so important to have both field geologists who study the ancient history and behavior, and also people who are ready in real time to detect ground shaking from earthquakes, changes in gas content or gas abundance, and all the other signals that could happen when a volcano wakes back up. I live in Virginia where there are two extinct volcanoes, Mole Hill and Trimble Knob. Are there any volcanoes near you? Are they active? Let us know down in the comments section. Also be sure to like STEM and 30 on Twitter and Facebook and subscribe to the National Air and Space Museum YouTube page and like this video.